Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Year by year, I get fascinated by George Orwell more and more. I read the, his 1984 and Animal Farm when I was already an adult um, living in the USA. In the USSR, both Orwell's books were banned, and gosh, we didn't even know that author George Orwell existed, um, let alone his books, okay? It was just not in our universe. So when I read 1984 on Animal Farm, I was absolutely fascinated. I'm a pretty smart guy, and I understood right away that he wrote about both books about tyranny and about my country, where I was born and grew up, about the USSR. And um, I and everybody around me, uh, we took his books as a warning. A warning that, look what might happen if absolute power gets concentrated in one person's hands. But you know what? We failed. The warning did not do us any good. George Orwell turned out to be not a writer, but a prophet. And his 1984 on Animal Farm turned out to be not a warning to us, but a prophecy. Instead of 1984, you know, um, actually George Orwell foresaw the future. It's just he made one mistake. Um, he, wrong, he named the books wrong. Instead of 1984, it have, uh, he should have called it, he should have named it 2023. And instead of Animal Farm, Russian Barn. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Welcome to Inside Russia. My name is Konstantin. This is where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. What you will not find here is BS, lies and propaganda. What you will find here is truth, common sense and logic and some emotions because I am a human being. For the first 30 or so minutes, I usually deliver a message and invite everyone to carry on into a live stream chat where we converse and I answer questions. I try to answer as many questions as I can and I'd love that very much if you continue the stream after the message. Russian government started waging a war uh, 18 months ago. Attacking Ukraine was a moment when everything changed in Russia. Russia's future changed. R direction where the country was going to changed. Russia's path changed. Russian government started waging the war not just on Ukraine, but on everybody on the entire world, and that includes Russian people. You know, there are millions of Russian people that are still inside the country who oppose the war and hate Russian government. Along with millions of Russians who have fled the country, they have become, or they are called now, the enemies of the state. The enemies they are for one simple reason. They're trying to to exercise their constitutional rights to replace the government. People in the current government, well, they don't like that. They don't like very much that someone even thinks of replacing them, okay? They can't imagine getting out. They don't want to go. They are modern Politburo. They are to stay on top of Russia for life. Well, at least it's what they intend to do. And in order to stay there for life, they need a unique system of managing the country. And that system consists of two parts. One part of the system is suppression uh, or oppression, you know, either way. Well... It's been done. There's a system of suppression, oppression in Russia that's been created. And it has even has an official name. It's called the vertical of power. 
If you follow my streams, you have heard many times that I speak of the vertical of power. I talked of how it works, what it is, what it consists of, how it was created, and so forth. You know, if you haven't heard that, go ahead and watch my previous streams on that. Another part of the system, which is also very important, is support. No matter how effective your suppression oppression system, it cannot oppress and prosecute all. You know, it can only deal with a certain part of a society, with a certain number of people. If all people in the country, all 140 million people rise up, stand up and start speaking up, this is it. It's over for the current government in, in hours, minutes. I mean, look what almost happened on June 24th with Cheveka Wagner and Evgeny Prigozhin. Still fresh in our memories, okay? So this suppression oppression system can only deal with a part of the society. In order for a totalitarian state, totalitarian system to function properly, the masses must support it. The majority of, cis, of citizens must go along. And uh, how do the conditions uh, condition the masses, the majority of people, to uh, you know, start going along with them? By making small, tiny steps, but in large numbers and fast. Stepping stones, and uh, there's one must. If you want to stay in Politburo for an, your entire life, to keep abusing power, enslaving people, you must start conditioning them at very early age. So when they grow up, they support and love you no matter what you do with them. They support and love you unconditionally. Russia has a history of that, um, and the history keeps on repeating itself in Russia, you know. The latest example is Stalin. Well, looks like Stalinism is being reborn in Russia under a different name. In February of last year, Russian government attacked Ukraine. And like I said, in the beginning, uh, they, you know, like I said in the beginning of the stream, they started the waging the war on everybody, not just the Ukrainians. In order to keep their power, Putin and his criminal partners decided to isolate Russia from the rest of the world and trim it to their own liking. Oppression, suppression, they already had. They had been building it for the previous 20 years, and they built a very successful, very, um, uh, very efficient in the year of 2023, the vertical of power has been perfected. Now, they need support, big time. Adults uh, were the first ones to fall victims. They've been successfully targeted by propaganda. Russian propaganda is mighty strong and powerful. And now, time has come to solidify the support. And the Russian children are next. Russian Ministry of Education is unofficially called the Ministry of Truth now. And, uh, well, might as well call it the Ministry of Truth and History. Um, they, you know, folks who work in the Ministry of Truth and History, they all read 1984. Why invent something new when they can just learn from the best? Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Uh, they control the present, oh, for sure, hands down. Present is theirs. The next thing they need is to control the past. And how do you control the past? Well, by rewriting history, obviously, and installing new fake history in children's heads. And this is exactly what we're seeing happening in 2023. Exactly. The new school year has just started. September 1st is when they go to school in Russia. And school children have 
brand new, shiny, beautiful textbooks with rewritten fake history inside of them. They control the present. They just started installing the fake past in the minds of Russian children. And the start was on September 1st, 2023. How do I know the history inside those new books is fake? Because I remember I lived through that past. I witnessed what was going on in the late 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, and in 2000s. I've seen both sides. I've seen Russia and I've seen the, past, the West. I've seen it all. They can, you know, they can't fool me. I have a clear mind and a laser sharp memory. I still remember some things from the 70s when I was just preschool. Uh, so let's uh, take a look inside this new, new history textbooks, you know, then call Russian government's bullcrap out. All started in April of this year, 2023. And the first steps, as usual, were tiny. <laughs> in the new edition of uh, fourth graders' school textbook, uh, The World Around Us, used at schools throughout the entire Russia. Several references to Kiev were removed. You know, there are chapters in the history of uh, Russia, and, you know, in the past it was called Kievan Russia, Kievskaya Rus. Well, guess what? They, surgical, they surgically removed um, references to Kiev. There's no more Kiev in the Russian history. What? How can you do that? <laughs> you know, this is what happened. Well, I guess uh, they can do that. Even Soviets didn't do that. Uh, and the Russian people, you know what? They didn't say a word. I hope they are in some kind of a lethargic sleep. Otherwise, they're just plain stupid, you know? They have their country stolen in, by a few gangsters right in, from, in front of their noses. And now they're having their children stolen from them. And they're still sleeping. They're still silent. Anyways, the experiment turned out to be a crushing success for the Russian Ministry of uh, Education and Truth. Uh, and history and truth and whatever you call it. And no one has said a word. And then September, September came this month. The new school year. And this is what kind of uh, history we have at Russian schools these days. It's been openly rewritten in front of our eyes. Last year uh, and for 30 years before, uh, there was one history and you know, normal true history. Why? Because we all remember. This is our country. This is our past. This is our lives. And we remember what happened with my, our country. I have remember what happened with my country. And on September 1st of 2023, an alternative fake um, history or whatever, stories, craziness, filled the official history textbooks. Now, for the 10th and 11th graders, that's uh, junior and senior high in American alternative, equivalent, not alternative, uh, American equivalent of uh, senior and junior high school. You know, so uh, Russia's 10th and 11th graders has a chapter dedicated to the full-scale war with Ukraine, which repeats many of this Russian propaganda statements. And of course, they don't call this the war. They call this the special military operation. Although even Putin himself admitted it was a war, and many other top officials did. But in the school books, uh, it's still called SVO. Among other things, the textbook says that the West used Ukraine as a fist aimed at Russia and a springboard for a NATO attack. According to the textbook, in January 2022, Moscow allegedly became aware that Ukraine, with the support of the West, was preparing for a full-scale military operation to seize Donbass and Crimea. And Russia was forced to take preventive measures. 
You know, that's what they call killing of thousands of Ukrainians, raising Ukrainian cities. They call it forced preventive action. That's what they're teaching our children now. The goals of Russian preventive measures in a textbook are called safeguarding Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics from daily shellings, ensuring their sovereignty, demilitarizing and denazification of Ukraine. I have spoken on these goals many times over 18 months. And I don't want to repeat, uh, makes me angry, very, very angry. In addition, the authors also wrote about the Western sanctions that were supposed to tear apart Russian economy. And of course, you know, Russian economy kept on going strong and withstood. <laughs> we'll see soon. Uh, they wrote about the West's desire to force Ukraine to fight to the last Ukrainian. Um, they love, they keep on saying that. They love saying it publicly. Oh, America is fighting Russia until the last Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, they wrote of Russians who rallied in support of their armed forces in masses. Somehow they didn't write anything about the Russians who s rallied against the war and against, you know, uh, what Russia is doing in Ukraine. And there were rallies. I was there myself. Don't try to tell me that they were none. I was there. I filmed. I witnessed. Uh, and they also talk about Vladimir Putin's um, public rating of approval. That exceeds 80%. Yeah, right. Uh, the textbook claims that Ukraine is an ultra-nationalist state and that the idea of destabilizing Russia has become an obsessive for all Western countries. I hope you understand what I'm saying, because that, that's kind of crazy, okay? I've traveled, I lived in the USA, I've traveled, my parents lived in Prague, which is the very heart of Europe, a NATO country, you know, the Czech Republic. Um, I traveled all over Europe. I traveled all over the world. Not single time I saw that someone was trying, playing with an idea of destabilizing Russia. You know why? Because no one cared about Russia whatsoever. No one gave a crap what was going on in Russia. Why to destabilize it? Who cared? Well, Russia started destabilizing itself. But then again, that's another story. Let me quote some more of this textbook. Ukraine is an ultra-nationalist state. Today, any dissent in Ukraine is harshly persecuted. The opposition is banned. Everything Russian is declared hostile. Well, perhaps everything Russian is declared hostile for a reason, because everything Russian is attacking, attacks Ukrainian cities every day and kills Ukrainian people. I don't know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud, kind of, you know. Uh, any dissent in Ukraine is harshly persecuted and the opposition is banned. And why would Russian government care about that? Does it care about dissent and opposition in Zimbabwe or in Bolivia or in Colombia? Hmm, doesn't say anything in the textbooks, you know. But in, in Ukraine, oh, it's put in the spot, you know. Uh, when learning on the internet any information about what's happening in Ukraine now, remember... The global industry for the production of staged commercials, stuffing, fake photos and videos works as a continuous conveyor. That's the message to Russian children, senior and junior high, 10th and 11th graders. Hmm. I mean, I watch internet, things on internet every single day. 
And the amount of things that I watch and listen on internet is, you know, tens of hours every day. I learn a lot and I see a lot. And you know what? Not one time I have seen a staged commercial, a fake photo, or a video. I see them plenty from the Russian propaganda, but I kind of did not see them on the other side. Because you know what? No one cares. Russia is doing so much that just showing the truth about Russia is already horrendous. Why faking it? The unprecedented has happened and the unthinkable has happened again. The West has stolen the total assets of the Russian state stored in their banks, totaling more than 300 billion. Well, I doubt that they're using the right words. I doubt that uh, the West stole. The West has frozen. And for the reasons, you know, the West has given explanation and the reasons for freezing the assets, okay? And to me, I mean, they're logical and they're quite acceptable, you know? But that's not what the Russian government teaches Russian kids. The West has stolen um, more than 300 billion. Now, let me read you some of the names of the chapters from the book. And again, I quote, Relations with the West at the beginning of 21st century. Pressure on Russia from the United States, countering the strategy, uh, strategy of the West against Russia. Falsification of history. Revival of Nazism. Ukrainian neo-Nazism. Coup in Ukraine 2014, Return of Crimea, The Fate of Donbass, Minsk Agreements, what is it? Aggravation of the Situation, I think it's Escalation of the Situation, Special Military Operation, Confiscation, uh, Confrontation with the West, New Russian Regions, Ukraine is a neo-Nazi state, Special Military Operation in Russian Society, and the last chapter, Russia is the country of heroes. You know, the USSR was the country of heroes because there were plenty of heroes who were fighting real Nazis. Not Germans, but Nazis, you know. That's a big difference in my eyes. Um, they were heroes, really. But I would like to see one hero today. Show me. I'm not a kid. I'm an adult. I'm in my 40s. I know a thing or two about life. I can critically think. I can analyze. And I promise I will be very, very objective. Show me one hero in Russia. Okay, so these are the new chapters, and I will top it off with what Russian children must memorize now. I quote from the textbook again. Russia's mission can be interpreted as the Ark of Humanity, same as Noah's Ark, preserving natural wealth and resources, cultural and historical traditions, and spiritual and moral values that Russians are saving for the future world. That's the first time when I was preparing the stream. This is the first time when I heard this, this new mission, okay? Russia's mission. They're not telling us, adults, this Russia's new mission. But they're telling us to the kids. They do not teach our kids how to critically think. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure if one of the kids, uh, some of the kids critically think that's punished. Okay, that's considered as offense. Instead, they make them memorize this b -b 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 bullcrap, you know. And I'm trying to find words not to offend. 
the listeners, you know, to be as soft as possible. The arc of humanity, preserving natural wealth and resources. I mean, who are you kidding? Me? You can kid my seven-year-old child. You won't because he's out of reach. But, you know, you could try when he was in Russia. But you cannot kid me. The oligarchs, Putin's friends, have been stealing and destroying natural wealth and resources of the country. And you claim that your mission is to preserve natural wealth and resources? People, are you crazy? Are you okay here? Uh, You're trying to preserve cultural and historical traditions and spiritual and moral values? Uh, Say it again. Moral, spiritual values? Okay. You have priests of Russia's Eastern Orthodox Church uh, christening and you know, uh, um, saying putting holy water on missiles called Satan. Is that your value? Okay. You claim that uh, Russian church support always supported Russian army and the czars, and that's what you call moral values I mean are you people insane and you try and save everything for the future world Um, what future world what future world are you gonna live by yourself in the world are you gonna kill everyone else and take your fake values into the future world what are you teaching our children Folks, this is bullcrap, all fakes, every single word of it. Our memories are still fresh. We all remember what has happened. You know what? They went even further. They rewrote history from the 70s to the 2000s completely. And um, this is what they're teaching Russian children now, the new history, okay? Um, Folks... Russia is waging war on Ukraine, an unjust criminal war. No explanation, decent explanation was given to us, has been given to us yet. Uh, They lied and then lied again and say different. And this is a human tragedy what's happening in our neighbor country. But there's a war going on inside Russia. The war with the past and for the past. And those who started this domestic war, you know, considering the first battle, they're winning. Because Russian people are kind of sleeping instead of defending, standing up for themselves and for their children. Because our memories are still fresh, but they will be fading very soon and very fast. And one day... There will be no our memories. There will be no us. And all only children of our children left. And since we will be gone and there will be no one to share the real true memories, our children of our children, they will start believing unconditionally these lies, this nonsense, this fake, this made-up history that's being cooked up for them. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. And folks, please don't make your own mistakes. Learn from ours. Thank you very much. This has been my my message. I would like to hear feedback from you. I would like to converse with you. Um, I would like to answer your questions if you have any. Um, Before I turn the live stream chat on, I would like to tell you a little news with help of Frank, uh, our fellow member of Inside Russia community from Germany, Uh, I have learned how to turn on 
any subtitles in any language for my past live streams. Take a couple of days for YouTube to create uh, subtitles. And if you press on subtitles once, they automatically turn into English. But if you press one more time after that, you will give them a choice of pretty much all the languages, including Spanish, Italian, German, and so forth. So check it out for my past streams. I was pretty excited to learn about that. And I would also like to um, ask you for a favor. Please help me spread my, this message by making reposts in the social media accounts. That helps a lot. Thank you. Um, turning on the live stream chat. I apologize for yesterday. My internet was cut off at the end of the message and uh, the stream abruptly ended. It wasn't me ending it. I was, uh, you know, couldn't do anything about it. Mods, thank you so much. Mommy, Lorna, Bob S. Um, anyone else today? And uh, thanks for coming. In case you didn't know and you're here for the first time, we have the best mods in the entire universe here. Uh, Lorna, Mommy K, Bob, S, Harry Potman, Prince Amir Fazad. And um, the usual suspects are the key of Inside Russia community. Thank you so much for coming back. Friends, as usual, if you want me to read your comments and see them easier, please put them in caps and put inside Russia after that sign so uh, your comment or question appears highlighted in a large orange box. Thank you so much, just like Eileen did. Thank you so much. Please throw a prayer or two my way, feeling dreadful with throat infection and influenza. Um, Eileen and everyone, uh, please, if you want me to put your name in a prayer list, um, you know, just do it in a message, uh, better to email me, or, because you might try here, just like Eileen did, and I noticed it, but I might not notice, because there are so many messages. So, Eileen, uh, definitely I'm putting you in a prayer list. And I'm going to keep you there for two weeks, and then I will start fresh every two weeks. Thank you so much. I'm glad you came. Thank you. Sam K. Howdy. Thank you so much. Charlie B. from Pacific Beach, California. Frank in Texas. Dirk. Uh, Sherry. Janice Burgess. Pamela J. Howdy, howdy, friends. Roy Cousins. Darla. Pinda. Keith. Dr. Devil, <laughs> howdy, Mike, KS, Ken Tyler, howdy. Uh, there are heroes in Russia most currently jailed, jailed for their opinions in Russian prisons. Andre, um, I agree, thank you. Rabbit Bill, thank you. Andrew Hudson from South Africa, Crusader Damien. Howdy, howdy. Keith, um, Scott. Karen, Angela McNaw, Dan Coldwell. Greetings you all. Howdy, Dan. Jess Terry, KG1. Pam Tree, Kate. Howdy, Koshkin Dom, hello. Roger Williams, howdy. Ann Larson, howdy, Constantine and Mods, welcome back. And lots of love and prayers from Sweden. Thank you so much, Ann. I appreciate fantastic to see you. Hannah S., hello from Denmark, hello. Sam K., thank you, I appreciate it. 
Thank you for being a part of the community. Keep on coming back all the time. Thank you so much. And Michael Silberg with a question. Does today's message assume the current government in Russia will last until our grandchildren are adults? Makes me feel sick. Michael, I believe that the current government has no future. I believe that the Putin is going to be out of the office by the end of this year. I am not God, okay? I am not, I don't see the future. Uh, there are some things that I forecast based on facts, based on my understanding of the world, based on my experiences, okay, and based on my beliefs. Uh, there are some things I forecast and I believe, but not necessarily that I am absolutely right. Again, I believe that it's going to get over soon, but what I don't know is what follows after. I don't know who's going to replace Putin. I don't know it's going to be better or worse for Russia. And, you know, thinking that this bullcrap will last for until our grandchildren are adults also makes me sick. But I'm being truly, uh, brutally honest with you with everyone. I don't know. I hope not. Uh, but look what happened at the USSR. 70 years. There were four generations. Mark Bram from Jacksonville, Florida. Eric... Streamero, for future streams, maybe record your streams while you stream, if you have enough storage space. Well, my streams are s stored. I mean, you can go back and each watch e e each, every one of them. I mean, uh, YouTube records them. <laughs> I don't understand the question. Mac, howdy. Scott Nesbitt. Florian Gay, thank you so much. Um, hello, Constantine and team, great job. Um, I hope you, I pronounced your name right. Why do you think St. Petersburg Harbor thrives? Uh, numbers are fake or it's truly doing well. Um, why do I think that St. Petersburg thrives? Well, first of all, I don't know if it really thrives. Okay, but what I believe it's doing better than other Russian ports. Um, for one simple reason, let me give you a different example. There are thousands of shopping malls in Russia. Literally thousands, big and small. And ninety percent of them are not doing well. There are currently a few hundred shopping malls uh, listed for sale. The owners want to get rid of them because, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious they're not doing well. But there are shopping malls that are doing pretty darn well in Russia. In two cities, in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. And if you go and visit them, perfect locations in the rich neighborhoods, um, in the place where government employees who steal a lot from Russian government, from a Russian budget, from the Russian people, live. Uh, they have plenty of money. They're profiteering from the war, okay? They go shopping, they go dining, they go entertaining to the shopping malls, and the prices have gone up for everything. But the shopping malls, few, are busy. Uh, They are not a true indicator of what's really happening in the retail industry in Russia, okay? So I think that if St. Petersburg port is thriving, it's for the very same reason. Russia does not have many ports. If you look in the north of Russia, that's St. Petersburg. If you look in the south, it's Novorossiysk. 
to obse. Pretty much it. Uh, you know, those two ports are thriving because everything comes through the ports. The Europe has been cut off, it used to be shipped by trucks from Europe. Imagine how many goods. But now the only way to Russia is through the south, which is very complicated and costly, all through two ports, St. Petersburg and Novorossiysk. So they're thriving. I hope I answered your question. Dan Lawrence, great stream. Thank you. Do you think that the Kremlin will cut off global open access internet as in China and its effects? Dan, thank you so much. And there's a good question. Let me answer. It depends how long the Russian government is in power. If it's not for long, let's say things escalate, starts escalating now due to some different reasons. And let's say Putin is out of the Kremlin. <laughs> and um, things go back to the right way. Okay, The forces of light, the forces of good embrace Russia and it's returned, okay, then certainly there will be no uh, meddling with internet. But if Russia continues to go the dark way, you know, into the darkness, then yes, sooner or later they will cut off the global, cut off Russia of global internet just like the China did the, the, its own people. They actually already started testing this system. They're cutting off YouTube of uh, internet. Well, of <laughs> they're not cutting off YouTube. They are install. They have already installed a system that filters YouTube traffic. Basically, it allows you to go to YouTube, but certain videos are unavailable, and the videos are told by the Russian, made unavailable by Russian government. Okay. That's a local regulation system they have created. They're testing it now. So I assume it's going to start working soon. And then the next step would be cutting off internet uh, completely inside Russia. Now, Crusader Damien, howdy friend. The best questions come from you. Red Medvedev's heat heartwarming 9-11 message to the US and the world. No, I have not yet. Medvedev was here a couple days ago. Um, I'll tell you in a couple minutes. Is he warning us that Russia will provide a dirty nuclear weapon to use against us in the US or Europe from one of uh, Russia's new friends? Um, Crusader Damien, my suggestion to you, do not listen that alcoholic. Okay, um, I don't know whether he sobers up and sends his messages or he writes them drunk or someone else writes for him but he is not worthy listening to he came to a birthday party a couple days ago over the weekend to Tashkent and boy I was praying that I would not run into him because I would have told something uh, not very cultural cultured not very soft not very nice, you know. I'd get in trouble. My tongue would get me in trouble. But, uh, you know, thank goodness I didn't run into him. Starshine Ranch, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, I appreciate it. Don't feel so bad, Constantine. <laughs> if history is uh, written by the victor and Ukraine wins, Russian children may sooner learn the truth. Thank you. It's a good message. I actually thought about that. I thought about that, and I hope this happens. The chances are this happens. But you know what? This world is too darn big and unpredictable. So I hope and praise and pray this happens. Thank you. Eugene Lindsay, uh, uh, to those who cause the little children to stumble, unfortunately, the price will be blood of the innocent and the guilty. Vero Beach, Florida. That's a 
powerful message from Vero Beach. Thank you, Eugene. Ian, it's hard not to agree with you. No, it's hard to disagree with you. Uh, please forgive me. My English sometimes uh, fails me. Not often, but sometimes. Diana Smith, it seems that's so important for Putin to control how his role in the world is seen by history. The textbooks are part of this. It's a hopeless plan. Diana, I agree with you. It's absolutely hopeless because he has he's made his mark in history and it's indelible. We all know what this mark is. Uh, 666 comes in mind, my mind. Cloud, um, strife. Do you think Russia will ever go back to normal? I would love to visit Russia, but not right now for obvious reasons. I hear you. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to visit Russia right now for obvious reasons. And I don't think I'll be willing to visit Russia for a long time. Do I think it'll ever go back to normal? I hope so. I hope so. I have not lost hope because if I do that's going to be a dark day in my life I have not lost hope for at least one reason because I know that there are millions of people who are decent who are good who do not support war uh, who make themselves heard who get arrested who get jailed um, standing up against the government you know it, as long as people like that exist in Russia I have hope so, I hope so too. Thank you. Um, Pamela J, Susie Mailer just got an Amber Alert. What's an Amber Alert? Mr. K, my daughter is visiting Prague today. Any place she should visit? Well, I'm pretty sure she already visited the... Um, Staromirska Ploshit, I think, this, the, the main square. The Karlov Bridge is a must, of course, uh, over the river. And the Prashsky Grad, that's the castle. You can see it from the center of Prague. It's, it's right there on the hill. It's magnificent. And the center of Prague is really an open-air museum. The city is so beautiful, so rich in history. Um, I would also have... Um, I would also stop by a, a restaurant. I don't remember how the golden check, but every restaurant has incredible beer. And uh, gosh, it's been a long time. Been uh, twenty. It's been thirteen years since I've been to Prague. Anyway, piece of meat, rulka. Uh, uh, piece of meat. Uh, pork, I forgot. So you have it with beer, and it's so really, really good. Then uh, buy waffles in an open air uh, market. You know, just that's that's what I would visit. Palia Flex second mobilization coming soon. Well, let's put it this way. I made a bet with one of the fellows uh, who visits Breakfast Club every morning. Uh, we bet on a borscht. And my bet, my, you know, I say that uh, mobilization, we will hear about that before October 15th. I think we'll, we'll be hearing about it very, very soon, within a week or so. We'll see. So uh, this is my opinion. I think uh, mobilization, it's not... Second mobilization is going to be a new active wave, let's put it this way. They will start taking, grabbing, you know, pulling out of life. Uh, many more Russian men, many more than they've been doing so far, you know. Jan, hang in there, Constantine. We can only hope that things will eventually turn out right. Only time will tell. Very wise. Thank you. Time will tell. All the best to you and the team. Thank you, Jan.
Baker Stock, uh, Howdy. Jeffrey S. had birthday. Thank you so much, Mammy. Uh, we will, I will, <laughs> I will sing just in a little bit and I hope everyone joins me. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, Bantam Smoker, I have a couple uh, messages I'd like to answer. KG1, thank you. Abducted Ukrainian children are being brainwashed too, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately, they are also being brainwashed. And I don't know what to say about this. I That hurts. Um, I don't know what to say. MacFun, what would have happened for the major majority or important sections of society of what would have to happen to make them stop cooperating with the government? You know, a lot of people are not cooperating with the government. They are being quiet because they are afraid. There's fear of them being prosecuted, getting prosecuted, uh, thrown to prison, sent to, you know, the front lines. So uh, the question is different. What would have to be done for Russians to... Not stop co cooperating, but to stand up and start acting actively. That's what the question is. And I don't know. I've been thinking about that. Think about that every single day. I wish I had the recipe. Uh, Jason Carney, thank you so much for coming back and supporting. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, friend. From me and my family. You're the champion of super chatting. Thank you. And thanks for the five uh, gifts of sponsorship to five people. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. White Lightning. Brainwashing kids is something Islamic, Jihad, and Hitler. Youth did to make them killing machines with tragic results. We must guard our children's ears. Please do. Like I said, my last words in the stream and the message were don't make your own, your, your own mistakes, learn from ours. And this is definitely a huge mistake to learn from. Crusader Damien, the Hitler youth, was also an attempt by another inadequate little man to commit his people to total war. It ended very, very fast. There are Nazis, but they are in Russia. You know what? It's hard to disagree with you. The more and more I think about it, the more I see, the more I feel, the more I experience, it becomes harder and harder to disagree with you. Just, just to think about it, if someone told us, you know, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, we would be Nazis, ah, it's impossible. Well, I guess it's possible, you know, turned out to be possible. Will they have enough ammunition for all this mobilization? Marion, no, they will not. Uh, I think they have been stockpiling and stockpiling and stockpiling, but still they do not have enough. Well, they didn't sto it didn't stop them from doing mobilization one year ago, exactly. They didn't have anything back then. Uh, check Zach the Russian on the same subject, on the same as Constantine stream. Good watch. Dan, thank you uh, for the heads up. I do not watch anyone lately. I just don't have time. Zach did the stream on that. Uh, hang on, let me see. 
Zach is a good kid. I know him personally. We spoke uh, quite a few times. Well, a few times. And I'm so glad he made it to the United States. And I think he's there to stay. And uh, the moment I saw that kid running away from the police and succeeding, I said, wow, he's going to go far. You know? Uh, there you go. One day ago, new Russian history textbook full of... Well, I'm glad that, uh, you know, knowing Zach, I think that we have very same opinions on many, many things. Yeah, they're full of it. And uh, David F., will you also move to the Gregorian calendar? You talking about Russia or me? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to answer you. I, I I live fine is the way I I live. Gregorian or what is this? The old, the new calendar. I don't really care. Mammy K, happy bird. Oh, belated birthday. Okay, Mammy K's birthday was quite some time ago. Why are you? I'm confused. You're saying, Mommy K, hope you had a happy birthday. Uh, okay, I'm 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 confused. I'm sorry. Oh, Fox, the birthday song for Jeffrey S. You know, Jeffrey S. is a great guy. He's such a great member of Inside Russia community. If you come here regularly or sometimes, you will find Jeffrey S. and his fantastic humor. Just don't listen to him on one thing. Dating advice. That's it. Everything else is great. <laughs> and Jeffrey had a birthday. So this is uh, quite something. I'm going to perform a song. In honor of Jeffrey's birthday, I'm warning you so you close your eyes, or well, you can close your eyes as well, cover up your ears, that's better. So, there, there we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jeffrey, happy birthday to you. From Russia with love, from inside Russia with love, from inside Uzbekistan with love, and from Tashkent with love. Happy birthday to you, dear Jeffrey. Uh, sing a little something special extra for you. Uh, I usually don't do that, and I never do it well. Uh, but, you know, there we go. I wish you happy birthday. I wish you all the best, good health, you know, lots of smiles and good reasons, many reasons to smile and uh, good people around you. Happy birthday. Your voice is getting better. <laughs> I don't know. It's practice makes it perfect. <laughs> I'd still, I wouldn't quit my day job. No, I don't have a day job. There's nothing to quit, so I can sing morning till nine. And Susie Mailer. So we have two birthday uh, insiders, Russian insiders. Um, quite a day. Another song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Susie, happy birthday to you. Uh, also wishing you many happy returns of the day and a fantastic celebration and all the best. Good health. In Russia we, you know, start with wishing good health because that's the most important thing. Everything else you can get by yourself, but if you have... Uh, good health and that my first wish is good health and uh, my second is good luck and the third is all the best
KG1 expect there will be more of the prison population used in the next mobilization. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, what they're doing, they're trying to offset mobilizing Russian regular Russian men as much as they can. They are mobilizing uh, incarcerated people. It's actually quite unbelievable. They actually um, mobilizing the, the, the people from prison, not Cheveka Wagner, but Ministry of Defense. They are offering to write off debts to the ones who are filing for bankruptcy, who have lots of debts, uh, alimonies, you know, dance, debts uh, for um, defaulted personal loans, defaulted mortgages. Uh, they are also offering contracts that they pay good money to people who are poor, alcoholics, you know, the ones addicted. And they're trying to offset this mobilization of regular people as much as they can. But we'll see what happens. They're so desperate, they send their people to Cuba, set up special, special undercover teams to actually mobilize, to, to attract Cubans into Russia and make them sign up contracts with Ministry of Defense. Thank you, Jason, again for another contribution. Uh, or it's not contribution. How did you say that? Um, a super chat. Thank you so much. And Dave Strains, thank you. Voice lessons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Scott Nesbitt, thanks for the great time with everyone. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Great to hear from you. And Harry Potnan, um, yes, I read that. Thank you. White Lightning has just gifted five sponsorships. Thank you so much from me and from five people. Thank you. That's why there are offering everyone personal loans. Pamela J, yes, I think so. I think so too. The banks have been calling everyone like crazy. They call me at least twice a day, some, sometimes three times. And like I've said many times, you know, oh, Constantine, dear Constantine, Mr. Constantine, we would like to offer you this uh, loan. No documents required except for your passport. And I said, no, well, thank you, but no thank you. And then, what? We're offering you a large amount of money. Take it. Spend it. Spend it. You must have lots. Of, and then they start like, you know, they, they have a script and they start reading the script. Oh, don't you have anything... Uh, on a wish list you've been saving up for, for example, a new car, or perhaps you need a mortgage, you would like to move to a bigger apartment. Why would I freaking move to a bigger apartment if I don't, if I can't afford it and I have to go out and get a mortgage for that? Why would I do that in the world, you know? Why would I do, why would I buy a new car if I don't have money for this? Oh. And, uh, and tell them, no thank you, but no thank you. It's absolutely stunt. Like, what? You're not taking money? That's free money. No, it's not free money. It's freaking personal loan. You're going to charge me 35% annuity. huh? Oh, you know what this is? Oh, what are you, uh, used to work at a bank? Yeah, I freaking used to work at it. I never worked at the bank, but I'm not stupid, you know? So, uh, yeah, Pamela J, that's... Uh, could be one of the reasons could be could be they've been pumping out money and now they say well you have like million ruble uh dead uh would you like to write it off make it disappear eh, just go to serve in ukraine not a big deal you know you'll get off easy we want to send you to the front lines you're gonna be out back somewhere and then you sign the contract and in three days boom but i was promised Get the hell out of here. Go out there, you know. Go to the front. That's how it works. Um, Crusader Damien, 
when will Russia put Steven Seagal in the fight? He's the Bang Bang Warrior, Potato Hat King. Well, he's a rich Bang Bang Warrior because um, I saw a document, a letter from his foundation asking for $10 million, $10 million to Steven Seagal Cinematic Foundation, Cinema Foundation, that exists in Russia, by the way, uh, to promote his movies, to make new movies, to propagate good movies in Russia, $10 million. And the letter was uh, addressed to the head of Gazprom, Miller, and um, saying, you know, we need this money, we're going to put it for the good cause and all of that. So Steven Seagal is doing pretty darn good in Russia, you know. <laughs> uh, but I would love to see them in the fight, you know. He's such a patriot of Russia. Why doesn't she... Why doesn't he go and join the front lines, you know, the troops on the front lines? Wolfhound 26X, thank you so much. Very sad topic indeed, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And Jason Carney, again, thank you so much for your support. Um, no comment. It's not personal. It's strictly business of the Godfather. Same quote, Russian history book about relations with NATO Ukraine, page 406. Someone in Russia is a Coppola and Brando fan. I am. Okay. What about uh, Ed Snowden? He's been forgotten. I haven't heard about that guy in years. Uh, Light motif, I don't, I don't know what to say about them. Okay, folks, time to um, wrap up. Thank you so much for coming. It's my honor. Um, again, just to remind you a couple things. If you want to have subtitles in different language other than English, press subtitles twice. If you press it once, you will be transferred into automatically generated English subtitles. But if you go and press it second time, you will have a menu from all kinds of languages, including German, French, Spanish, Italian. Uh, and the second, um, second reminder is if you'd like me to mention your name in a prayer for any reason that you think is good then please let me know somehow through email or through the mods perhaps um, I will be cleaning out the lists every two weeks two weeks because there are so many people uh, that have been on the list for such a long time so uh, and new people keep coming keep knocking on the door and asking to be put on the list so um, please let me know if you need help, uh, if you need to be mentioned, let me know through uh, comments for the mods or through my, the email. Thank you. I invite everyone to finish the stream with me in prayer. Thank you. If you're religious, if you're not, still pray with us. You can call a different name. Sending good vibes, wishes, anything kind of the same thing anyway so um thank you very much let's let's pray dear lord jesus christ thank you so much for giving us this day thank you for putting food on our tables thank you for giving roofs over our heads um, thank you for surrounding us with people who we love and who love us please give our children uh, give us wisdom to keep the skies above our children's heads peaceful and clean. Give us wisdom to raise our children the way that when they grow up, they become good adults and make this world a better place. And we'll never engage in any wars. And for now, please keep our children safe and healthy, please. Dear Lord, please help stop the bloodshed in Ukraine. 
reach out and touch the hearts and souls of people responsible and capable. Do anything that is possible and needed for them to wake up from their lethargic sleep and get terrified of what they have done and make the decision to stop the bloodshed. Please help every single Ukrainian who has, who has suffered from this tragedy answer their prayers and make their wishes come true. Please send angels to people in Ukraine to keep them from harm's way and help my country, Russia, assemble the army of the strongest angels with the sharpest swords led by St. Michael in the shining armor and send them uh, down to this earth like heavenly avalanche to get rid of the demons, roll over the demons who have hijacked my country. Um, please get rid of them and have angels run Russia. Make Russia peaceful, loving, loved, respected, and respectful. Respecting. Please help all people who are traveling. Send them safe travels and help everyone who is seeking for asylum, running away from evil. Please help everyone who is suffering from the attacks of Russian airstrikes in Ukraine right now. Keep them safe. Please help all the single mothers who are struggling, bringing their children, making ends meet. Please help all the sick, the hungry, the homeless, the jobless, um, the addicted, the depressed, the ones who are struggling with their faith, the ones who are not feeling good about their lives. Please shine your light upon everyone in need. Please surround them in, with your warmth and fill their hearts with love so they feel better about themselves and about this life. Um, they will get up from their knees, stand, st stand tall and proud, and will have a chance to lead happy, healthy life. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to create this community and allow us to pray every single day. Please help everyone who is praying along with me or simply watching us pray. Please answer everyone's, um, everyone's um, answer everyone's prayer and make everyone's wish come true. Thank you so very much. Dear Lord, I would like to ask you for a few people who need your help. Um, and I would like to start with Eileen. Please help. Um, send her recovery. Please help Jason Connor. The date of his surgery is nearing and then he needs your support. Please send angels to him. Uh, Janice Stevenson, Jay Spike, Sam from Kiev, Boss Salmon, Leslie Fleming's daughter, Frank in Texas, um, Vaseline Lubomirov, Gloria Roberts, Julia Haney, Liz Dumbrell and her family, Ann Larson, her family and daughter Hannah, Darla, White Lightning, George Ruberty, Dave Strain, Bip, um, the Highwayman, David Porter, his family, and everyone from Chernovtsi, Ukraine, Stephen from Sweden, uh, Stefan, Stefan from Sweden, Susan Marshall, Alvin, Alvin's sister, John Lee McMahon, Meta Spencer, Terry Carter, Pamela J, 
Наташа, Елена, Джейк, Майкъл, Оля, Даша, Бони, Галина, Анджеликът Лайф, Рендолф, Грейс Философи, Мистер Дин Спунер и негов църч, Голд Арсевия Литерн Чърч, Сузи Мейлер, Керен, Лори Майлс Хъзбанд, Рафаела Фром и Сара. Дей Лорд, плес хелп всички дете от Украина, които са били ефектът от тази тържава трагедия. Плес хелп, сенда им ангелите и просто хелп им. Also, плес сенд рекавери на всички All, all, every single child who is not feeling well right now. Thank you so much, dear Lord. Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, friends, for coming. Not an easy stream today, but um, being brutally honest with you. There are some light streams and not so light sometimes. So, thank you so much for coming again. It's an honor to have you all here. Thank you. You're fantastic. You're awesome. And you rock. Uh, please come back for another message tomorrow. I'll try to make it interesting. I'll do my best. And before I sign off, I would like to, as usual, ask you to um, say it along with me. Um, the usual. Say it out loud, the loudest that you can. And that is Carthago de Lenda Est. <laughs>